Okay, let's explore Jam Pro. Again, the record is on because we're recording the audio at good quality for this demo. So we've got our four channels, each with eight clips. Let's bring in the drums for it. In this set, they're called bass. It's combined bass and drums, trap style. By the way, each of the main modules that you see are combined on the play screen. Tap the bottom right hand corner to get to a selection of individual full screen views of each of the main modules. The XY, the DJ effects, the cold cutter and the play matrix. As you can see, you can swap around from one drum kit to another. Let's get into a bit of drilter, combination drill and filter, using tip control for subtle expression. And here we've got the stabs, and the patches at the top that are swap between different sections. Moving down here, we've got the per channel effects, is the crush and distortion for channel one. Tip control, mini XY, letting us alter two parameters of the crush and distortion for channel one. Bring in channel two, the leads. This has its own distortion. And so does channel three, the effects in channel four. Each of which has got the mini XY fingertip control. That's the same for all these effects. The filter, the distortion, the filter, the delay, the reverb and the side chain. Each channel has its own set. Altogether you've got four distortions, four filters, four delays, four reverbs and four side chains. In fact you have a fifth set for the stabs which we'll look at later. Let's turn them all them off before we slam back. But here's an easy way to do it. Just recall the patch where they're not turned on. patch up here to record it, a long hold on it to store whatever state you're in, including the clip selection and any effects that are turned on. Let's have a look at the delay on channel 4. Move it right over there, reduce the delay time to get a sort of uh, wicked resonant effect, and then the Y axis is about the amount of feedback. So if you pump that up quite high, then the delay will take a long while to decay for a dub delay line effect. And back again. Remember, you can use as many fingers as you've got to alter these effects using the tip control. Move over to the stab section here on the right. The loop matrix on the left is all about loops. On the right, you got one, one shot. Let's just sparse it out with just the bass in. The individual one shots, nine of them, usually short sounds that you can play percussively. Typically at the bottom we keep a kick, a hat and a snare so you can do some finger drumming and later on we'll show you how you can record those patterns into a new sample and make your own beats just using the stabs. The stabs have their own effects on off button which has its own XY which alters the uh, feedback and the delay amount. Now we can play a tune here using the pitch bend a smart pitch bend, you get musically correct intervals, the scale. It's a bit of guesswork what you're going to get out, but generally it sounds quite musical. Usually better with a bit of delay to smooth it over. There that said sub synth. We're just using a simple uh, kick drum clip here. Most of these clips have already got some some bass on, so you wouldn't hear it. So we've got this simple one. You hear these other clips have already got some bass in. That's a typical trap style. 
Now because on the sub bass there, the pitch ramp is right up, you're getting that boo boo. Let's reset that. All sliders in jam, if you double tap them and they reset to their defaults. Here the default for pitch ramp is 0.5, meaning it's off, it's not going up or down. With a sub bass we can do quite a lot. Normally it follows the root note, which is set up here. You can change that and see if I change, you see it's going up now, A, A sharp, G. The sub bass will follow it, because follow is on. By the way, you can also change the BPM of everything we're doing here. The whole set. Double tap on the BPM to reset it to the default, which was 160. Let's turn the release down of the, the sub bass so the notes aren't quite so overpowering. And also balance it between the sub octave and the main octave using the color axis. Depends what note it's using, so balance. Say we don't want the sub synth to play so much, we turn the, the steps down. Now it's not playing on every step. It's the kick drum from channel one. Whatever's playing in channel one, the kick is used to trigger the sub synth. Similar to the side chain pump effect, which we'll look at later. You can also say don't do every bar and don't do every step. So reduce the density of this sub bass, then turn the release up a bit. Where you can add a heavy bass to just about any drum track. Perfect for drill. On the left we've got the master effect and this is a sort of mastering channel to make things sound more punchy, add it some extra high frequency. As we turn it on and off you hear the difference. It's the air percentage which is adding the top. A boost in compression make the sound more punchy. Usually you don't need to mess with them too much. And there's also distortion as well. Two different settings, a more of a digital one and a warmer one as well. If you want that crunchy, at a party and all the speakers are being overdriven feeling. Master overall volume there. And break is for when you're doing the deck stop effect. So that's one of the cold cut slots triggers the deck stop. Break is the speed at which that happens. More break happens more quickly. Less break, nice slow slow down. Like that. Okay, where else should we go? Here, we've got the tone screen, which contains the distortion and filter. That's individual for each channel. Each channel's got more specialized controls for each of its effects. So for example, You hold on the, the channel selector and you'll see all the channels come up. So we've viewed one of the channels at a time. That's which channel's effects we're looking at. So the tone, for instance, now we're looking at the filter and the distortion for the lead channel. Here at the bottom, you've got different types of distortion, bows, overdrive, etc. If it's too much, we turn the depth or the drive down. And the crush is a bit crush kind of effect, which is acts in combination. If I turn the drive down, I won't get any drive and I can just have the crush. Shape is my favorite distortion setting, particularly good on drums. So each of these effects has got quite uh, sophisticated controls. So the filter, it's got an LFO which modulates it. The frequency needs to be down for the filter depth to have much effect. Five different types of filter, DJM, four pole, two pole, high pass and low pass. If 
want to hear the LFO modulating the frequency, I'll have to turn the f cutoff down because if it's up top, it's maxed out, so the LFO doesn't do anything. Turn it down a bit and you hear that LFO modulating the filter and you've got a rate for that which you can change. If I go back to the play page on the Mini XY for each of the channel's filters, you can change the LFO depth and its frequency for some quite dubstep-tastic effects. Nice bit of tip control. Let's turn the filter off for a sec. Turn the filter off for a sec, go to the time page, and time is about reverb and delay. Let's go to the Mystic channel. It's the fourth channel. Turn some delay on, turn the feedback up. Warble is a kind of distortion effect each slap back gets a bit more distorted. You've got two types of delay, tape and digital. The tape type has an extra setting, wild feedback. You have to be careful with this because it can get quite out of control like an old style echo chamber. It can hurt your ears or other people's ears with that so do be careful. Quite psychedelic, changing the time. Even if I turn the delay off, it's decaying away. If you find the feedback's hanging around for too long, you can use some Mini XY, rein it back in, turn down that feedback a little bit so it decays away nice and gradually. To be clear, what those Mini XYs in the main page are, are just ways of controlling two parameters at a time for each of the effects. The reverb, you've got two types, Jam and Pure, which have slightly different sounds. The pre-delay inserts a delay before the reverb sound comes in, particularly on drums, can make a, a nice rhythmic effect. So let's check out the reverb on the bass channel, it's got the drums on. And now you can hear the pre-delay. You hear that delay before the reverb's coming in. If I turn it right down, now it's at the same time. Check out the difference between the pure and the jam, two different styles of reverb. The width is a stereo effect. You can also freeze the reverb, turn any sound into an infinite drone. Those are the basic channel effects. Remember you've got those for each of the channels and you've got it for the Stabs channel as well. The Stabs got its own distortion filter, delay and reverb. Delay and reverb. Normally this effect turns on whatever stab effects are turned on in its channel controls. Typically that's delay and reverb and the filter and the distortion isn't on. But if I turn on the distortion, then when I turn on stab effects that'll also bring in the stabs distortion. All these settings can be stored in the patch. So for instance, say I want a certain patch with distortion on for stabs, I can just create stab disto. Is now a patch with distortion on for the stabs. Quick advanced tip, if you want to recall a patch without recalling the clips saved with it, but just the effect settings, just double tap it. Let's bring in a nice hip hop beat. So should we play with about a bit of the cold cutter? That's on the bottom right of the main play screen. Again, we can skip to the single screen for the cold cutter so you can get a bigger look at it, clearer look at it. Four channel mutes, four channel selected. So those selected to the right of the pitch bend, they control whether a channel is affected by the cold cutter. The cold cutter is the most complicated part of the app, most complicated and most powerful. It's programmed with some useful effects already. So that rack of 16 slots which are pre-programmed with cold cutter functions. The rightmost two columns a momentary action, we call them super fills. So they're to just sort of generally to cut in quickly for a fill effect. You can lock them on, but generally they're momentary. 
Momentary means when you let them go, they stop. It's a bit of a mad, scratchy one. Yeah, turn the cold cutter off for the beats track, the bass track there. Now the scratching is just affecting the other track. Back on, cold cut back on on the bass. This glitchy effect is quite nice, it looks like a buzz saw. a kind of, I call that flow coma, like uh, the old State 808 track. It's a 16th fill, reverse, and that one's a stop beat. With these you can't just slide from one to the other. There's a good reason for that, which we'll explain another time. But basically the best way to play these is, you must release one before you press another one, otherwise the second one won't trigger. So often it's good to do it with one finger, so you're sure that you're leaving the first one before hitting the second. You'll notice if one of the left hand ones is selected, like that one that looks like an eye, that's called slot zero, a polymorphic cold cutter slot. If one of those ones is selected and you press a momentary action one on the right, when you let go of it, it'll cut back to the one on the left. So the eight on the left are pre-programmed to do some various quite cool things. If you look back at the main page, it's the same module. So that's slot one. This is slot two. And these can turn effects on and also juggle the beats, the slices. And quite hilarious operations. These different pages of the cold cutter. It is complicated, but don't forget your old friend in-app help is there available for every screen and function from the ninja head. Right. Here's an interesting function. It's turned on by slot four. Sorry, slot three. Um, that's called call and response. And this has its own little module there, C and I. And it forces the two pairs of channels. For each pair, it forces the channels to swap. So you can set the speed and ratio at which it swaps. Let's look at channels three and four. Now we speed it up, that will speed up the rate at which the call and response happens, the rate at which they swap between each other. And the ratio, the other axis on the XY pad, is the amount of time that's spent between the two channels. So if that was higher up at the top, then it'd spend more time on channel two, lower down more on channel four. So those other slots will have things programmed into them as well. Say you wanted to save that one into a patch, you can do that as normal. You just hold onto a patch, call it CAR, XCAR, for call and response. And that'll give you a message saving it with slot zero. The slot zero is a special slot. This is the one which is used whenever you save a patch. It's called the polymorphic slot. The other slots can only have one kind of state within the app, but so that you can save lots of different states in patches, it uses slot zero for when you change things. So you can have as many variations of the cold cut, as many slots as you want, but always using slot zero, which is the one saved in patches. The reason we did that was to make it more manageable, because if you had all 16 slots all saved in patches, we thought it would become a bit unwieldy. Is quite a good function where you can just draw on the slice sequencer. And we'll revisit that a bit later on. Okay, I think that's probably a good head pull to go on with. So let's stop. By the way, this video is a bit mad and long, I understand that. It's for people who really want to get into it straight away. Right now we're working on individual videos of reasonable length for each of the main sections and functions of the app. Thanks for your attention.